to the Geomestic channel. This video is the first of a three-part series on finding areas. Today's lesson will look specifically at triangles and parallelograms. To follow along with pencil and paper, head down to the description and click on the link that takes you to a printable guided notes worksheet, which will follow right along with this video. All right, now let's start by briefly discussing what finding area really means. In a plane or a two-dimensional space like my board here, Area is simply the number of square units that can cover a specific space. Now, when I say square units, we're literally talking squares with a side length of one unit. So if I were to cover up this entire figure with these little squares stacked one on top of the other, once I filled the whole space, I could count up these number of squares and that would be the area of this figure. Okay, now if I were looking at say, um, a two by two inch square. And I wanted to know the area of this square. I'm just gonna take those square units and start stacking one on top of the other. Um, because this is two inch on each side, I just have two of the squares per side. Okay, so I've got one by one inch squares filling the two by two inch square. And how many do I have? Well, I can count them, I've got four. So I know that the area of this two by two inch square is four square units. Now to um, write your label, you can write it as square units. Um, in this case, it's inches. So I can write it as four square inches. I can abbreviate. You might also see it as four inches squared uh, with your power of two there. Any one of these is fine. Whatever your label happens to be, um, in this case inches, if it doesn't have a label, you can just write units. Okay, so the area of this square is four square inches. Now what if I were to add uh, a column of squares? So one more column here, two more square units, uh, which essentially gives me a three inch by two inch rectangle. So what's the area of this three inch by two inch rectangle? Well, I can count, I just added two more squares. So this is six square inches. Okay, now we've just kind of stumbled upon the formula to find the area of any square or rectangle, because in reality, to figure out the area of that figure, I'm just taking the length of the base times the height of that rectangle. So I've got three square inches by two, or sorry, three inches by two inches, multiply those together, and I get six square inches. So my formula here, I can see that the area is just the length of the base times the height. Now you might think, well sure, it's easy when everything's square and you've got these nice right angles and your square units kind of stack real nicely right on top of each other. What if you have um, slanted sides? What if you're looking at something, so like a parallelogram? Okay, something like this. Now I've got good news for you. The formula stays the same. Okay, so the formula for the area of any parallelogram is just base times height. Okay, you might think, well, how does that still work? How does base times height still work in something like this? Well, what we can do is we can turn this figure into rectangle. How do you do that? So if I said this was my base and I drop a line straight down from this corner like so and I call this my height okay, perpendicular to the base. We'll talk about that in a second. So I've cut off this triangle on the left side. Okay so this triangle right here. What I can do is I can take that triangle and I can translate it just slide it right over here to the other side. And What's going to happen is that's going to fit right in this little void here. Okay, that triangle, these two are the same. And I can slide that over here to the side. Now this distance across the bottom is the same as this distance here in this triangle. So if I were to get rid of this triangle, my base, my original base of my parallelogram is still gonna be the same length. Okay, I'll just move that, that value over here to the other side. Okay, so when I move that triangle over, what I've done is I've essentially created a rectangle with the same original base length and height as my parallelogram. And we just said that to find the area of this rectangle, I would just take base times height. 
So it's really the same um, idea. So for any parallelogram, all I have to do is find uh, the length of the base and the height, multiply them together, and we've got our area. Okay, now, this right angle thing here. So a second ago I said that your base and height have to be perpendicular. Now that might um, kind of throw you off sometimes if you had maybe something like this, uh, we'll say five centimeters, eight centimeters across the bottom. Okay, if I had this information and I said what's the area of this parallelogram, you wouldn't actually be able to figure it out because your um, five centimeter length here, this side, this slanted side, is not your height. And it's not your height because that value is not perpendicular to the base. It doesn't cross the base at a right angle. So your height really um, could be in a couple different places. It's just the distance from the base to the top of the figure. So I could drop a line right here as long as that line right there is perpendicular to the base, crosses the base at a 90 degree angle, this value is really my height. Okay, this is my height. I could also drop it right down here. You could drop it right down in the middle, as long as that value, again, crosses that base at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so if I said, for example, the height of that thing, maybe it's, um, say, four centimeters. So we'll put it over here. Okay, so the height of this parallelogram is four centimeters. The base length across the bottom is eight centimeters. If I said, what's the area of this thing? I'm just gonna take the base times the height. So if area is just base times height, the area is eight times four, which is just 32 and we're in centimeters. So centimeters squared. 32 centimeters squared for the area of that thing. Okay, now base doesn't really have to be on the bottom. It can be any side. But as long as your base and corresponding height cross at a 90 degree angle, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so moving on to the area of a triangle. So I've got more good news. Um, while the formula isn't exactly the same, it is very close. Uh, because a triangle is really just half of a parallelogram. So if you think of, say, a triangle like this, For any triangle, I can just reflect that triangle across one of its sides and create a parallelogram. So like if this triangle right here was reflected across its side, I would really have two triangles that are the same that look like this, which again makes a parallelogram. Okay, so that parallelogram that I created has the same base length and the same height as my original triangle. Okay, so the base of this triangle is here. The height, again, if I drop that line right down at a 90 degree angle. Okay, the height of the original triangle is the same as the height of this parallelogram that I've created. And since the area of a parallelogram we just said was base times the height, if I took base times height, I would get the area of this whole thing, but what portion of this parallelogram is my original triangle? It's just half. So to find the area of any triangle, I can use my parallelogram formula, um, but just take half of it. So the area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. Okay, and again, base and height do have to be perpendicular as before. Simple enough. Let's do a couple examples. All right. Okay, so there's a triangle right there. say this is 11 meters. Really not trying to scale. I should have picked different numbers. Or I should have redrew my triangle. No problem. 
see how off scale we can make it. Okay, so I got an 11 meter base. We're gonna say that this is a five meter length here, as you can see, not drawn to scale. We'll say four meters here, and we'll say three meters across the bottom. Okay, so my goal is to find the area of this original triangle right here. Okay, so you can see I've dropped down this line to show the right angle to the base, but I've got a lot of numbers here, a lot of values. So if I wade through all the mess of numbers that I've got, I have to think about, again, what do I really need to find the area of that original triangle? So the area is equal to half of the base times the height. That's what I need. So if I said, what is the base of my original triangle? The base of my original triangle is here. Notice I don't really need this extra piece. This is just to kind of extend that base out so I know that this value is perpendicular to that base. So what's the base of my original triangle? It's 11. Okay, so the base is 11. What is the height of my triangle? Don't forget, the height must be perpendicular to the base. There's my right angle. It's this value here that is perpendicular to the extension of that base. So I'm not using the five, I'm not using the three. The height is four. So 11 meter base, four meter height. I know 11 times four is 44, and half of 44 is 22. Do not forget your label. We're in meters here, so how many square meters can fit inside of that triangle? It's 22 square meters. Okay, so if you're given kind of um, a bunch of extra information, just think about what you need. It's just the base and the height. Check for your right angle. You should be fine. Let's try another. So again, finding the area of my triangle right here is what my goal is. Now, a couple different ways to do this. Um, one option, which I'm not gonna take, but I'll explain real quickly. Since I've dropped this line down the middle, this eight unit length right here to make my right angle with the base, I've split this triangle into two separate triangles. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could find the area of each of these two triangles, this one on the left and this one on the right. I could find the area of each one and then add those two areas together to get the area of the entire triangle. Uh, but that's gonna take a little more work than I wanna do. So the base of my original triangle, this whole thing, is this entire length down here at the bottom. So if I wanna do this all in one fell swoop, what is the length of the entire base? Well, to find that, I'm just gonna add up these two lengths. So six plus four, my total base is gonna be of length 10. Okay, what is the height of the triangle in relation to that base? Find your right angle, straight up at the top, it's eight. Okay, so if my formula is one half base times height, I've got everything I need base, when I add those together is 10. The height in relation to that base is eight. I don't really need the 10 in this case. Off I go. 10 times eight is 80. And then half of 80 is 40. I notice I didn't give you any label, didn't give you any unit here, which is fine. Does that mean I can leave a label off? Not at all. So if you're not given a label, you're gonna write units squared. So we don't know what the unit is, you can just write u squared or units squared for the area of this one. All right, let's try one more. Let's see, 
13 feet, 5 feet, and 12 feet. I'm gonna put a right angle right up here at the corner. Okay. So last one here, we're gonna find the area of this triangle. So you might think, um, we've got a base of 13, but we don't really have a height. We don't really have a, a value that's perpendicular to that base. No problem. Don't forget that the base can really be any side. It doesn't really matter if it's at the bottom, if it's at the top, it's at the side. A base can be any side, as long as your height is perpendicular to that corresponding base. So the way I've drawn this triangle here, it might look a little trickier than it is, uh, because I have a base and a height that are perpendicular to one another. They're just not where your base and height usually are, at the bottom and then toward the top. So uh, if I were to take this whole thing and turn it to where maybe five was at the bottom or 12 was at the bottom, I have this base and height here, 12 and five, that I can use in my formula. Okay, so I'm not gonna use the 13 in this case, it's just gonna be an extra side. But I know that with a base of five, my height of this triangle would be 12. So I'm gonna use those. So if area is equal to half base times height, is equal to half, I'm gonna call five the base. The height in relation to that base is 12. Five times 12 is 60. And half of 60 is 30. We're in feet, so our label is gonna be square feet or feet squared. And we've got the area of our triangle. All right, that's all for this one. Stay tuned next week as we find areas of some other more irregular quadrilaterals like trapezoids and kites. You can find that video if it's already next week, right up there. Thumbs up if this was helpful and consider subscribing to the Geomestic channel for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.